even the mighty Republic bleeds when struck. In New Zealand, we filmed in the middle of winter, 
which is cold. I'm sure you guys are familiar with winters. They're quite cold. Um, New Zealand was no different. And so um, the water, they started off with warm water. They put in like really hot water into these mine things that were gross, which was great for the first half hour of the day until it got freezing cold. And I was like, oh, this, you haven't thought this, you haven't thought this out. Um, and so we were in this like freezing cold water in no clothes at all, which is obviously horrible. Um, sorry, ladies, just, just, yeah, you're like, oh, can I wear some pants? That'd be great. Um, and then they covered you in like, oh, nice, you know, this is memories now. I feel like I'm getting like, like, like flashbacks. Um, so they cover you in like this mud, but like, you know, you, you sort of go, well, just cover them in mud, sure, no problem. There's nothing bad about mud, it's just dirt with water in it. But they found like some kind of slime thing that looks like mud on camera, because apparently mud on camera looks like something else, I don't even know. Um, some crazy science. But yeah, so they like cover you in this sort of plasticky, gross paint mud thing, which is like, I feel like you get this, uh, some sort of like Ghostbusters slime pack or something. And, and it's okay. It's just, it feels disgusting, like covering yourself in a kind of a black sort of butter or something. And it's like that. But um, it's not terrible for the first few hours. And then because the lights that you're under when you film make everything really dry they're really hot and then it dries to you and every time you move it tears a part of your skin away from it it's just it's like it's the i can't even explain it i'm trying to think of something like if you covered yourself in like bandages and like tape and then just tried to do a dance it's kind of that feeling it's awful so yeah the minds were just great um yeah i was i've never been so happy to find navio in my life <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, it was um, unpleasant. Um, summary. <laughs> 20 minute conversation, summary, unpleasant. Sorry. Um, all right. Time for one more question. Not really. How many more? <laughs> Anyone else got a question that I can answer? Oh, you're so excited. It's nice to see you again. Yes. Hi. Hi. Good time, I guess. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, well, okay. Um, what is your question? I'm a Jennifer Sorry, Jennifer. It's the only language I know besides English. Let me have this. But I don't know very well, so please ask the question. <laughs> Uh, sorry for my rubbish English. No, sorry for my rubbish German. I have never learned English in school. <laughs> okay, I have my question two parts. Uh, the first part um, Have you any response from Kirk? Douglas? Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, what to say this guy? Okay. Uh, I love this, sir. Thank you. I, I don't know this man. I can't ask a question. Wait. Ah, uh, two questions. Yes. What is the second question? What is the next date for CUNT? Ah, excellent question. Both good questions. All right, cool. Um, answer the first question, which is awesome. I did. Um, we had uh, in the second, in the, my second season of Spartacus, the last one, War of the Damned. At around the same time, we were doing publicity for the show. Kirk Douglas, the Kirk Douglas, who's Kirk Douglas. Um, <laughs> was doing publicity for a book about his experiences on Spartacus and writing it and getting through the Hollywood blacklist and all this sort of stuff um, back in like in, in the days of communism and stuff, fun. Um, but so he was publicizing his book and so some clever person at Stars was like, how about we put those two people together? And I was like, that's a great idea. Um, and so I got to meet Kirk Douglas, which is about the coolest thing that's ever happened. So I meeting my wife, sorry. It was, yeah, no, don't point to her, she could be anywhere. Um, um, <laughs> she's terrified. Um, don't hurt her, be nice. Um, yeah, so I met Kirk Douglas, at, and, and we got to have a conversation, and he's like the coolest guy in the world, and he's really old, like crazy old, like 96 old. And, and he's obviously he had a stroke, and he's kind of got better, and he can sort of talk, but I, he was just the most amazing person, fascinating, hilarious, interesting, supportive, generous, it was just, yeah, he was a really cool dude. So we like sat backstage and he would tell me about things. And I was just like, tell me more anything, Kirk Douglas. Anything you say is great. Um, and he like signed something for my mother, which is really cool. And, um, and then I was on the stage and I, I got to come out to a stage much like this and be like, hi, I'm Liam McIntyre and I'm Spartacus. And he'd be like, yeah, fun, cool, people clapped, it was nice. And, um, and then from this side of the stage, this guy's like, No, I'm Spartacus! <laughs> I was like, correct, you are. And um, it was amazing. And I had a sword that I presented.
did it to him and stuff. And it was like, don't hurt him with the sword. Um, and it was like, yeah, so, yes, and he, he was very nice. He said I was an excellent Spartacus, which is about the best compliment he could ever get. I was like, that's, that's made my week. Um, and then I said to him, and like, I wasn't sure what to do because it was, I was kind of overwhelmed. Like, uh, some people are surprised that people in, like, the public eye, like, people that have been on television shows and stuff like that still get starstruck. I get starstruck like crazy. And so I was like, oh, that's good. <laughs> um, so I wasn't sure what to do. And so I was like, I, got, I had a publicist, and I was like, can I, like, I, I wrote this to Kurt, and, Kurt and, and um, I want to send it to him. I don't know how to do that, so I'm going to send you an email, and if you can make that happen, that'd be great. If not, that's fine. Weeks later, he sends me back, I, well, I get in the mail this thing from the desk of Kirk Douglas, um, and it, it was, and it's like a typewriter letter from, from him saying, it was lovely to meet you, all this nice stuff. I'm like, it's a typewriter, this is, it's just like so, you know, different, different generations, it was cool. Anyway, there's that. Um, uh, second question, are you going to see me on television? No, no, that's it, I'm done, that's it, that's the one thing at all. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> well, I hope not, I hope not. Uh, at the moment, there's nothing I can talk about, which is fun, but um, I'll let you know as soon as I can, I can say that there's some exciting show that I'll be part of. There's, there's been conversations, but I think I can officially tell you yet. I can lie to you, though. I can tell you all these things I'm not on. And they'll be like, yeah, I'm on this show, and that show, it'd be great. But as soon as I can, I'll let you know. I'll, um, I'll send up the bat signal or something, and be like, boom, he's in this show, it'd be great. Um, anyone else have any questions? Mentioning the, the bat signal, yes. would that be something? You would be up for it? Yes. Yes, I would, I would definitely be the guy that works the back signal in the background. <laughs> where Batman's like, Ben Affleck's like, Ugh, and Batman. And um, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that'd be a cool job. That'd be a cool job. I'd do that. Um, yeah, but if, if he's like, oh, <coughs> I'm sick and I couldn't be Batman, I'd be like, Oh, all right, I'll be Batman. Um, that would be a fine job to do. There's so many people here. I feel very flattered. Thank you. Um, anyone else have any cool questions? Which is an excellent question. I'm thinking, oh, no, oh, see, now I feel like I'm you first, maybe not. Anyway, you, you won. Uh, when you come back to Belgium? When will I come back to Belgium? What day is it? Um, <laughs> well, I'll be back next year, I think. Uh, Belgium's really cool. I feel like I won't have enough time to see it all. I'm going to Bruges. Bruges is meant to be really nice. Ooh. Is Bruges nice? Right. 
raise a million dollars. That never happened. So um, I had someone in my acting class who was German. Thanks, Germany. Um, he was like, hello, why, why don't you come into a show with me? It's be fun. Um, and I was like, sure, okay. Um, I'm in LA doing something on television. Well, doing something with a camera. I feel important. Um, it was like a submission for the Doritos commercials that they were going to do on the, the Super Bowl. She didn't win. Like, you know, I tried my best. They stuck a green screen, which was like flapping in the wind. <laughs> it was a bit low budget. And I did a ridiculous dance over and over again, and they stuck different countries behind me in post. It was amazing. I know, I'm, I'm still waiting for Doritos to be like, here's your million dollars. Uh, as yet, they have not given it to me. But yeah, so if you want to look at me, be far less cool than I am at Spartacus, that's the place you want to be. You got that? All right. Shooting on location is sometimes easier because you're like, oh, there they are, Romans, hi. Uh, 
Um, but um, not necessarily easier or better. I guess. It's just an imagination thing, really. It's cool. It was fun. All right, you have a question. Uh, you have a question. You have a question. She is still trying to ask, but she doesn't speak English, so you can translate her question. Excellent. Great. I'll, I'll do it. What was my favorite scene? Okay. Um, well, to be honest, my favorite scene is probably the very first scene in the whole show, which is Andy Whitfield underneath the arena with his hands sort of half shaking as he's waiting for his fate. Um, I thought that was one of the most amazing kind of scenes. Like when I was shown by my best friend, Spartacus, for the first time, well before I was ever involved, um, I remember watching that scene and going, I know I'm in, whatever you do from now. That's, I'm good. This is, this is, whatever this show is, it's clearly awesome. So, um, yeah, for me, I guess that's my favorite scene in the show, weirdly enough, which I think wasn't even in the original script, if I'm correct in remembering what some director told me once. So, don't quote me, because memory is not my favorite thing. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's true. Uh, and, but for me, I mean, for, for me, my favorite scene was, conversely, probably the last scene because it was like the most emotionally draining and important and heartbreaking scene where someone's going, hey, here's the whole show, this is the ending, don't screw it up, which is a lot of pressure. But um, yeah, it was really fun. Um, I don't know, it was also like, I guess, in that moment where I sort of, I guess I watched it later and went, if I can do that kind of acting for the rest of my life, things might be okay. I was like really proud of that moment as an actor, which is nice, you know, it's a nice feeling. So when any, I guess when anyone can do something in the job that they love, that they're truly proud of and aren't sitting there going, oh, I should have done that, or that was all right, you know, it was, it, was, it, was, it was cool for me to be able to sit there and enjoy something that I did, not tear it apart and try to think of better ways to do it and stuff like that. So it was cool, but I mean, there's, there's so many great moments. I'm gonna cut a guy's face off, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, I really like that scene with Blabber and Alithia when he finds out she's tried to abort the baby and he throws the, 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 the little you know, thing that was going to, to kill the baby to the side and so I was like, ah, emotions. Um, and the scene when, when Baro, has anyone not seen the show? Because I feel like I've ruined the whole show for you. <laughs> Spoiler alert, like five minutes ago, sorry. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, like it's uh, probably the last one. Let's go with that. Or I also do like a like a Shuruken Ryu kind of uppercut thing in the episode before that, which is cool. For the video game nerd inside me, which is pretty big. Um, anyone else with a question? Hello. Uh, video game question. Video game question. My favorite. All right. Let's talk video games. Let's talk One specific question. It's gonna be great. They Ubisoft made a game from Spark. They did. Yes. They sure did. I know. I remember. I was there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did. I don't play it now. Um, uh, this guy. Um, yes, he's right. I'm like, oh, excuse me a minute, I'm gonna play the game. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it was, I mean, it was fun. I kind of, I remember having a chat with Ubisoft going, please Ubisoft, don't make it a fighting game, make it like a role-playing game. But then again, it would be right? Right? Oh, let's get, okay, we're gonna talk about this. Um, <laughs> no. But then I also, I guess if you're Ubisoft, you go, cool, good, cool idea, Leah, that'd be great. Have you got like a hundred million dollars? Oh, you don't? What a shame. Because um, I imagine making like a Elder Scrolls Spartacus game would cost a bucket of money. Um, but to me, I was just like, make it a cool game. Because, um, you know, I don't have any concept of money. But um, yeah, it was, it was really fun. Um, I, I like had, because <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm like uh, such a disrespectful person. Like, I, I was like, hi guys. Got a few ideas. Here's 14 pages of notes that they probably were like, yeah, sure, actor, that'd be cool. Yeah, let's do all these. Cool. Next. Um, but yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't played it in a while, actually. Do you still play it? Uh, sometimes. From time to time. Yeah, this is true. But now with PlayStation now, you could probably they might be able to play it. I don't know if you can. Yet. I don't know if they brought it up yet. This is the thing. Sorry, guys. Anyone not playing computer games? This is going to get real boring for you. I'm sorry. Um, that's cool. That's cool. Cool. Is there one more cool than that? That's that for me. That's pretty cool. Um, three years. Set my watch right now. Three years exactly from 
right now. Synchronize watches. Go. Spice up. Alright, cool. Tick tock. Alright, clock's ticking. I'll see you in exactly three years. Let's do it right here. Even if nobody else is here, then we have to break into this place. Yeah. I can, yeah, I can kick things. Boom. Yeah, right back like that. Does anyone else want to kick some doors with me? Cool, sweet. Um, it's cool, uh, Excellent, excellent. Good idea. Anyone else have some video game questions? No, no. Really? I, you know, it doesn't have to be. Does anyone have any like questions that they're like, oh my god, I'll die if I don't ask some questions? I would like to know something a bit more serious. Uh, how was it? Not that serious. <laughs> To, to play the character because there's not a lot of documentation on the play. Yeah. Ooh, history question, please. Yeah, no, in fact, I, well, see, <laughs> man, I had one director on Spartacus that was like this trippy, bearded, transcendentalist. I don't know how to translate that word. Um, this, like, I don't know, he probably did a lot of drugs. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, was, he came out with questions like, um, you know, hey, you know, Spartacus probably never had seen himself in the mirror because they didn't have mirrors back then. <laughs> so I was like, whoa, he doesn't know what he looks like. Flash forward like a month later, I was like, who cares? How is that really going to affect my character? Oh, my face, I would be in, who knows? Um, yeah, so I'm like, oh, that's over. But um, yeah, no, seriously, it was like, um, you're right, there's very, very surprisingly little documentation on Spartacus. So much so, this is this loops me back right back to like the, the whole Kirk Douglas conversation. So thank you. I feel like I'm creating a story net, um, which is that um, most of what we know as Spartacus and the myth of Spartacus, who Spartacus is, is entirely created by um, Trumbo, Fast, and Douglas in the book, the movie, and his portrayal of Spartacus in the movie. So when someone says, "Oh, Spartacus, he's kind of like a Robin Hoodie kind of character. He's the one that freed the slaves." Um, all that sort of thing. Who knows? Maybe there's surprisingly little evidence that says Spartacus did. You know, even again, same director. <laughs> he did some great stuff. Um, this director also was like, "What if there wasn't a Spartacus?" I'm like, "Ah, oh, cool. <laughs> then I'd be unemployed." <laughs> um, yeah, he was like, "What if it was like a combination of generals, or not generals, of like major slaves or gladiators from that time?" And when they all broke out, they kind of had all these little rebellions. And they kind of, when they wrote about it a hundred years later, which is the earliest documentation, I think, on um, on Spartacus's rebellion, um, that, that when they wrote about it, they just kind of got all of them and called them one person because one person was scary, and oh, there was a bunch of people around that did some stuff. So you're like, oh, this one guy did all this stuff, and it was terrible, and it nearly destroyed Rome. How scary! You should, you know, hurt your slaves more. Great, um, you know, uh, more chains. Um, so. Yeah, for me, it's, it's really interesting, that history of who Spartacus was. So I guess for me, um, it was important because I was replacing Andy Whitfield. Um, I thought he created the heart of Spartacus so fantastically, um, like emotionally, that, that I was like, well, I can't copy him and what he does, or how he looks, or how he moves, and all that sort of stuff, because that would be weird. But if I can somehow get a similar emotional beat to the thing that he was doing and try to be you know, if people could go, oh, he sort of, his soul is in the same kind of place as, as the way Andy portrayed him. I thought that would be the best way for me to get into the character. So rather than go through history books that have very little information, or go through the, the Kirk Douglas, but again, Kirk Douglas is kind of the archetype of Spartacus. He's like the, the baseline of Spartacus, because after that, everyone started to assume, you know, like, that's, that's who Spartacus was. He was a really nice guy. Who had it wasn't well, nice, but he was, a, he was a really brave, strong guy, independent, did all these wonderful things, and tried to free people from slavery. But you know, and there's oh, so many theories about all that. But it was, you know, so there's, there's that, which I guess is important to who Spartacus is anyway. But um, yeah, trying to tap into that special thing that Andy found, I thought was probably the best way for me to uh, approach it emotionally anyway. Well, you succeeded. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, Hey, that's good. We've got time for one final question. One final question. So who has the best question? You know how I was saying like early on, don't ask the best question until like right now? This is the time. If you I think this lady's got a good question. This is the good. Look, you look really excited. Like, oh, wow. Bold up energy. 
No pressure? No, no pressure. Well, actually, I mean, probably a lot of pressure, like if you really thought about it, but don't think about it. A lot of pressure. <laughs> okay, so, uh, the ending scene was, for you, a very powerful scene. Yes. Uh, what I remember from the scene was that Spartacus said, Spartacus is not even my real name. And I thought to myself, um, that's true. You completely forget during the series that it's not his real name. I may have put it in. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, I'm sure Stephen would be like, no, we didn't. Um, <laughs> but I thought, uh, I wondered, uh, did you have like a secret soul name for Spartacus yourself? No, I know, I like, besides George, uh, no. Um, no, I was, that was the thing, there was a time in the writing of that last episode when I was like, come on, he doesn't have a name, you know, don't be like, that's my name. Just be like, that's not my name. When they say Spartacus, they give me like a joke about it. Um, like, no, lady, that's not my name. Um, yeah, and so then they were like, oh, what well, should we say what his name was? I'm like, ah. Uh, not that, again, this is me talking like it was my decision. <laughs> it wasn't my decision. This is Stephen and I, again, it was probably like the Ubisoft game guy. I was like, huh, cool idea, Liam. Click. Um, yeah, but it's actually not me. But, um, yeah, no, so we, we kind of, we talked about it, the director and the producers and, and Stephen and I, because I, and we were all kind of like, we shouldn't give him a name because we like the idea that Spartacus is everybody, you know, and so anyone can say, I want to be a hero, I want to, I want to fight for freedom, I want to be Spartacus, you know, and so it was kind of part of the whole mythology that he didn't have a name, you know, he, his, his name is anybody's name, you know, so any, anyone can feel like they were him or part of him. Um, we joked about a lot of names and generally we just like try to find the most embarrassing name that we go for, which I won't say because you know, what if you call that name? How annoying. Um, so, you know, but we went through a bunch of them. Um, they were hilarious. But yeah, I they just, you know, like, I just, you just be like, what's your name? Percival, I don't know. Um, yeah, this, which is cool. But uh, no, we didn't, we didn't have a name. I didn't really think, I, I guess if ever I thought of him having a name, I guess I tried to think of it as my name because it was connected to me. Otherwise, you know, George Clooney. Um, Spartacus is really George Clooney. Prepare to sacrifice anything for the, something he believes in. He will go to the ends of the earth to protect people he loves, to see justice done, and he will give up his life. This is not your fight, Spartacus. I gave my word. Blood and honor.